everybody. Welcome back to Once Upon a Page. We know it's been a couple weeks. We apologize for that. We're having some trouble getting our schedules synced up so that we can meet and get um, some new videos made for you. But with this being Mother's Day weekend, we wanted to be sure and post a video um, for you guys, and for the moms out there. And um, just to kind of share with you last year, I know on our page, we shared about mothers and books that we've read and things like that. And this year, we want to talk about how our moms have influenced our reading and writing journeys. So um, I'll let somebody else go first and then I'll jump in later. So, um, I remember my mom read all of the American Girl books with my sister and me when we were growing up. I mean, they're, they're like not very thick, but still just to do like a chapter every night and we did all of the, um, <laughs> the Little House on the Prairie series. <laughs> I was like, I know what I'm talking about, but I cannot think of the word. Um, so we did all the Little House books. We did um, several others like that that we did together. And then she also would help me like find books that were appropriate you know, and actually would hold my attention and stuff at the book fairs, you know, when you weren't allowed to buy posters and pencils, you had to buy books. <laughs> but um, she introduced me to romance novels. So um, I definitely have my mom to thank for that. <laughs> Although I think that my mother-in-law actually read more romance novels than my mom because my mom actually also likes things like cozy mysteries and stuff too so do you read <laughs> I, every now and then I'll pick one up but they are just not my thing for some reason I always get really mad at cozy mysteries because I um I keep yelling at her like why aren't you dead yet you're so stupid. <laughs> so obviously I just need to stick with romance novels because um, Cozy Mysteries and I don't always, uh, we don't always get along. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I was always the um, kid who like anytime we went anywhere, I would ask for a book instead of like a toy or you know something like that so my mom always would buy me books and um you know just encourage me to read um I would stay up late at night and hide under the covers you <laughs> know with like a flashlight and like read uh, I remember one Christmas Eve I was so excited and I couldn't sleep so I stayed up all night long and I read a book it's a Christmas morning <laughs> because I was just so excited yeah so um I would read in the car and my mom would be like are you gonna get sick and I'm like no I'm fine you know now I read in the car anymore unfortunately but like I was always the kid that asked for the book or I take it with me I read in the car you know um read it when we went out anywhere you know instead of being social <laughs> that's the way to be <laughs> My mom worked at a bookstore, at a Christian oh. bookstore. Nice. So I always got to read pretty much anything I wanted that, that came from there. And I mean, I, I started with like uh, Jeanette Oaks series with the animals, like Spunky's Diary and all of that. And, you know, went into Lori Wick as I got older and things like that. Because my mom would always bring books home. Um, they he want, her boss wanted them to read and so um, she would bring books home and I would get them for birthdays and Christmas and things like that too so because she always worked there I I read Christian fiction from the time I was a kid and really enjoyed it and um, 
then when I went on to start writing, she enjoys writing too. And so she went to my first writing conferences with me. And she, people say, don't give your, don't give your book to your mom and let her read it because she's just going to be like, oh, this is awesome. This yeah, no, my mom will tear it apart. My mom <laughs> is a good editor. <laughs> So I was always able to do that kind of thing. And so she's always been um, with me kind of encouraging me in the writing and helping me make it better and helping me go for it. So really good. Do you find that your mom shows up in some of the things that the moms in your books that you write, like in what they say or something that they'll do? Do you find your mom influencing the moms in your book? No, not so. Oh, in my series, Thea is estranged, you know, like estranged with her mom. And my mom and I are like best friends. So I can't say that. Now, maybe going forward, I might try to throw her in there a little bit. That could be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my girl in, in my books as well, she has a kind of antagonistic relationship with her mom at first and I don't have that I mean I've had people come up and be like I didn't know it's not it's fiction it's not me and my mom <laughs> yeah um I actually I feel like my family actually does influence some of the family members of my book not completely Please do not go read my books and think that that's exactly what my family is like, because it's not. But um, but in my the book that just came out in January, um, my character Chris uh, is having a conversation on the phone with her mom, and I have it like where she calls her because she left some socks at her house over Christmas and instead of just sending a text message she called her and I think before my mom learned how to text she probably would have done that but now she does know how to text so she texts me all the time <laughs> my dad would do that because he won't text <laughs> and then in the in my book that's coming out in December I feel like my real parents They're not exactly the same as the parents in the book, but I feel like they could have acted that way if I had been like my character, if that makes sense. Just to be completely oblique and <laughs> not tell you anything about my story. <laughs> now you have to find it to find out. Now you're gonna have to go find out what my story is that's coming out in December. Um about the preacher's kid who leaves her faith when she grows up and moves out and um you know just it's, it's really easy for me to like imagine how these moms would react in certain situations just because my mom has helped me through so many situations and yeah like Heather um after my books are published my mom is the one that points out all of the typos that were left in it so at least mine does it on the right end of the publication <laughs> I'm like I'm just gonna have to say I need two more weeks so my mom can look at it first before it goes to the publish you know <laughs> I love her but you know what can I do about it then <laughs> when when the editor sends you the copies just forward them to her send it on to mom and and have her read it with me that maybe between the two of us we could catch them all <laughs> you probably would it's pretty good at, at stuff like that erin <laughs> you didn't mention like were there any specific books that your mom got you hooked on or read with you when you were growing up um i was a saint I just, I, I remember we just always got the, you know, those little golden books, mm -hmm. you those, yeah, like, she's mm -hmm. always, um, but, but yeah, um, we would read all the time, but I can't think of, like, one where yeah. we, like, 
really did it together. It was mainly, you know, picture books from, you know, being little. And then as I got older, I just devoured everything I read. So um, <laughs> my librarian at my school actually one time told me, um, she was like, Erin, you've read everything. <laughs> <laughs> order more books <laughs> well, yeah. you know so yeah yeah well, I, had, I had to complete brain in my library when i was in elementary school because i had such a high reading level that she was like you don't have a limit just go wherever you want to go so which i thought was cool mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome it brings up a good question we're talking about the books that our parents read with us or got for us or whatever. Are there books that your kids will be able to look back at and go, oh, mom read that one with me. I know that, I mean, I read to my kids all the time when they were little. I still have shelves of picture books because I absolutely adore picture books. And so I was reading them to the kids all the time because I always took that if you want your kids to be readers, you have to model reading. No, it doesn't always work that way. Right. I, I love reading. I am definitely a reader and I raised pretty much four non-reading kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of them that are kind of moderately. One of them wants to be a reader as well, but he, it takes him so long to go through one that he usually puts it aside and, so, uh, yeah, I pretty much raised four non-readers, which I don't know how that happened. But they will be able to look back and say, at least three of them, the three younger ones. Um, like, I read The Lord of the Rings. Or, no, nope, sorry, wrong one. I read The Chronicles of Narnia series with them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not Lord of the Rings. We read that different at a different time. <laughs> I was like, man, that's a lot of, of reading out loud to get through those. <laughs> yeah, no, Chronicles of Narnia, sorry. <laughs> so my daughter is six and she is just learning to read this year. Um, she's about to graduate from kindergarten and um, in the last few weeks has actually passed her first, second, and third grade sight words tests. Yay! Um, so this is a very exciting time in our, um, in our lives because she's starting to get it and starting to get where she can read for herself some of the books. And I'm thrilled, but I also have this whole stack of books that I want to read with her because I remember how much I enjoyed them when I was younger. So like all of the Beverly Cleary books, um, the Fudge books that uh, Judy Bloom wrote. I have all four of those. I have all the American Girl books because my mom bought them for us while she was reading them when we were growing up. Of course, Anne of Green Gables, The Secret Garden, Little Women, you know, like I've got a whole list and I'm like, we really need to start reading these right now because otherwise we're not going to get through all of these <laughs> because I just keep adding to the list. And I realized some of them, she can just take and read on her own like I have all of the Wizard of Oz books there's 14 I have all of those and um, I'm working on getting the whole set of the Little House on the Prairie series because I feel like we need to pass these on to our children even though they're old books like I started mm -hmm. reading um, one of the Ramona books with my daughter and they say something about uh, Ramona messes up the library book and so they have to take it to the library and pay for it. And it's only like a couple of dollars. <laughs> and so I started looking back to the beginning of it. And I'm like, when was this written? <laughs> it was written like 50, 60 years ago. And I had no idea that they were so old. But they're, you know, the relationships and everything in them, they're, they're the same. We have more technology and stuff now, but the relationship between sisters or between friends or whatever, you know, that's what you get out of books like that. Yeah. Did you read a bunch of stuff with your kids, Erin? Um, we, 
Um, only have well, Daniel, my oldest, he loves to read, so we would read things at the same time and like make it a competition kind of thing. You know what oh. I mean? So, so we kind of had a different spin on it. Um, plus, I read them all. You know, uh, some books when they were little. You know, but. Um, mm-hmm. Gabe um, is starting to really like to read. Um, he likes to read some history books. So he's been bringing those home from school, which is fun. Um, and Bella, she you know, kind of hit or miss. You know, she really liked the Junie D. Jones series. So read a lot of those. Yeah. But Daniel is my, my, my reader. So. I feel like both of my kids are going to end up readers. Because my four-year-old likes to be read too. And he's starting to pick up on a lot of words just because he has a sister that's learning to read. And so I feel like he's going to get to kindergarten and already know everything. <laughs> yeah, my kid not really have the attention span just to sit. To me mm. So like when they were really little, we did. But then they kind of was just like, Eh, you know, so as much as I would have liked to have done that more, they didn't yeah. really do. Well, we also need to um, at least mention the all the beautiful women. There's my cat. <laughs> Special guest. <laughs> um, I wanted to mention all the women who want to be moms and maybe haven't been able to do that because I know for six and a half years I was one of those women and this weekend I know is really hard for um for them and so just keep them in mind too as we go through a weekend that's you know bittersweet for some like some that have lost their moms already too um we always miss my mother-in-law this weekend too so uh, shout out to all of those people and we hope everybody else has a great Mother's Day <laughs> weekend. That sounds awful. <laughs> but seriously, have a good weekend no matter what and um, treasure your moms as long as you have them because they are special people. And until next time, we hope that you will subscribe to our channel, uh, like our videos, share it with people. And feel free to leave us a comment. Tell us about uh, some of the books that your mom's read with you or introduced you to, or if you think we're completely crazy writing the moms the way we do in our books, you know, whatever. <laughs> but happy Mother's Day weekend, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.